actually in the screen? Yep, right at the bullseye middle. And it's recording. Don't worry. What? You're not smiling. Well, I'm not ready to shoot yet. <laughs> Hello again, loyal listeners and viewers. Uh, Frontier Geek back at you again. Uh, this is um, somewhat of a compendium, I guess. I took and, and clipped out some video from the uh, truck walk around that I'd done a couple years back uh, because it actually contained uh, some very good commentary, which I've already done. Uh, so I'm going to... Um, basically just edit that down and provide the information that was already given in there, but uh, just in a specific format. So uh, this is just the intro uh, coming into the video. This is going to be uh, engine coolant temperature. Uh, this is the sensor and gauge installation. Uh, the last video that I did was uh, the uh, transmission temperature, uh, which obviously is uh, quite similar on the gauge end, uh, but a bit different on the sensor end, as I'd already covered, that uh, that was some screwed into the, the test port and the size of the side of the transmission. And uh, so uh, this one is going to go ahead and give you a little bit of detail uh, on how to uh, set up your uh, engine coolant temperature. And... Um, uh, I know that we're uh, heading into the cooler months here, so um, those of you who don't have garages, uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, trust me, I, I, I know the feeling. Uh, I dealt with it for not uh, years at a time, but sometimes decades at a time. And working outside, especially as you get a little older, is uh, really, really sucky. Absolutely no fun at all. So uh, hopefully um, uh, any of you folk... Um, uh, friends of the channel here who are, are down towards uh, the uh, southern end of the country where the weather is still pretty decent. Maybe you'll you'll jump on one of these projects or uh, hopefully if you're up this way that uh, you have a bigger, nicer garage um, than I do and you can do the work inside. So <laughs> I, I really hope so for you. Uh, that would be great. So um, without further ado, I'm going to uh, launch into the engine coolant temperature and uh, hopefully you uh, you find all of this info uh, to be helpful in your next project as well and see you in a minute moving on over to here we have my gauge package which I added this is engine coolant temperature and transmission temperature and I find these to be uh, not only helpful but what I would call really um, I would say critical uh, knowing what the true engine temperature is and the true transmission temperature is extremely important the gauge here in the cluster is not really a gauge. It's actually more like what I call an idiot pointer. It only has three positions. Cold, operational, and what I call you just blew your engine. It does not indicate actual fluctuations in engine temperature. When it reaches a certain point, the needle just jumps up and stays there. So this one here is a true engine temperature which is connected to a sensor under the hood. Yes, this is not the cleanest of engine bays, but here we are. And as promised, when I spoke about the engine coolant temperature earlier, this is an engine coolant temperature adapter. Early on when vehicles were a lot simpler in the 50s, 60s, and even up into the 1970s before fuel injection and all arrived, it was possible to take and just screw an adapter into one of the extra ports in the intake manifold and that would then go ahead and send coolant temperature to your gauge of choice which a lot of vehicles at that time either had no gauge at all or had a gauge which was suspect in its accuracy so therefore uh, people would uh, often add a, a Sun Pro or something of that nature a Stuart Warner those were all popular back in the day and uh, they would go ahead and add those in so this is actually an adapter which I purchased on eBay and it was uh, $10. The clamps that it came with were absolutely junk, but the adapter itself is beautifully machined. It's made out of solid aluminum and I've had absolutely no trouble with it. It worked very well. You throw the clamps away, get yourself some Ideal stainless steel. That's actually the name of the company's Ideal stainless steel hose clamps and you go ahead and cut a section out of your upper radiator hose, mount that in, and make sure that you do not forget your ground cable. If you notice here, there are actually two wires 
coming out of this sensor and that is extremely important because without that ground lead you will not get any signal at all. How the gauge is actually working is it's sending a small current through this wire which then transmits through the sensor and then out through the ground wire back to the chassis of the truck and as the temperature is varying the sensor is changing its resistance which changes the amount of current flow without that ground lead you have no current flow at all therefore your gauge will be completely non-functional and if you do not understand why this issue is occurring you'll probably be scratching your head because it will be very frustrating that this is not doing what you expected it to be doing and nothing is happening then you call your friend who understands electricity a little more than you do and says hey what's going on here okay and so that did in, um, conclude the engine coolant temperature uh, project and a uh, little bit of walk around there including the details uh, I hope that you uh, picked up all of that. Um, it, it's not rocket science. I mean, really, none of the projects that I've done, <laughs> honestly, are, uh, are rocket science. You know, we're certainly not SpaceX, and uh, we certainly don't have their budget either. So um, a lot of these uh, projects really can be done for uh, under $100. Um, so, uh, you know, that's, that's usually uh, well within the reasonable realm uh, of us mortals. Um, as a little uh, LOL on the, the side, uh, my wife and I have an agreement uh, regarding finance that if it's a project that's going to cost more than $60, uh, we sit down and discuss that regardless of whether it's a truck or, or video game or, or guns, whatever it happens to be. Um, we, we have that $60 uh, figure. So if it's something that's really small and cheap, I just go ahead and buy it uh, without really having to worry about it. Um, but other than that, we, we do sit down and discuss it, you know, because uh, happy wife, happy life. Um, so she is, uh, uh, a.k.a. the long-suffering director um, that you have heard uh, in the background a few times. Uh, but uh, never to be seen on camera because uh, she said that she didn't want to be videoed. So I'm like... Okay, <laughs> so sometimes it's actually a lot more fun to just be that disembodied uh, voice in uh, in the background, you know, like getting to do voiceover for Mr. Ed or something like that. You know, you uh, you're never actually seen, but yet you're famous. <laughs> so um, I don't know. You know, if the if the channel ever takes off, uh, hopefully someday, and uh, and you know, really brings in subscribers by the. Uh, the tens of thousands or anything like that um you know she'll be uh, she'll be internet famous but uh regardless of that um we're we're uh closing in on uh on 800 uh subscribers at at this time and so everyone that's been loyal to the channel and has subscribed i very very much appreciate that uh for those of you that haven't if you've found any of this material to be helpful um, please, please, please do me a big favor and just mash that subscribe button. I promise that I will not spam you with garbage and, you know, uh, useless videos of uh, how to apply toenail polish and all of those neat things that seem to be bouncing around YouTube these days. I promise that uh, we will continue to be providing um, only uh, specialized information. And actually, uh, given that, um, we are going to be having a surprise guest coming on board pretty soon. Uh, the potato farmer uh, is now in the Navy in the Nuclear A program, um, my son, and uh, he is going to be starting a sub-channel for us uh, which is going to deal with uh, video games and uh, you know as uh, someone of his age, he's 20, uh, he's pretty good at video games so <laughs> he could smoke me uh, pretty much on just about any other given day. So uh, hopefully um, uh, maybe some of you that are not actually uh, coming here strictly for the truck content, or maybe that you like trucks and video games, as I do, uh, will be able to uh, pick up some interesting uh, tips and tricks uh, from, from that channel as well. Um, that will be sometime in the new year. Uh, as I had mentioned, he's, he's in training. He is in Goose Creek, uh, South Carolina, which is the uh, Naval Nuclear Propulsion School. So his curriculum is very, very... Um, study intensive lots and lots of hours heavy training and uh he doesn't have a whole lot of time off so he's planning on doing this uh in between uh the three major breaks 
uh, that they have during their training. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have Potato Farmer back. So uh, hopefully um, those of you have seen the, uh, the early videos, uh, like uh, Home Depot and the Pine Barrens, um, that was absolutely hilarious. If you haven't watched uh, some of those early ones, um, really go go back and watch them. I mean, I, unless my sense of humor is completely off from what your sense of humor is, I think you're going to find them to be really funny. Um, them, uh, my my brother and uh, my son, uh, when those two get together, it's um, it's all off the cuff. We have absolutely no scripts. It's all ad hoc. They just make up crap and just throw it out there and. Most of the time, it's pretty dang funny. I got to admit, those two bounce off each other. They really, really do. So uh, hopefully, you'll find some of that content enjoyable as well. And uh, we'll uh, catch up to you soon. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's Frontier Geek signing off. And as I always say, uh, if you didn't take her out and get her muddy, you're not using that truck right. Until next time, see ya.